Rob, how have you been? Guys, nothing has changed for you. Can, can we be careful with that one? Motherfucker, sit down, shut up, stay in your own lane. I'm sorry, I didn't get that memo. This guy comes into your house as a guest and then takes a giant shit on your living room floor. I, I can't blame you because after all this time, I should have just trusted you without saying it. Cappy's got a jar of peanut butter there somewhere. Uh, the only uh, way that dog could tolerate him. I'm too tall for that. Fuck it, I don't give a shit. And there goes the monetization. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. What the fuck? Good right evening. It's better than work. <laughs> We're back at regular scheduled programming again. That's <laughs> I'm right. You had to get up early for this one. I had to not go back to sleep for this one. Hey, Nuke's here. Sup, Nuke? Good to see you, man. Nuke's Nico's here. Nico's here. Nico's here. Yeah. Did you know Nuke is not a good man? Did you know I already know that. Nuke is a fucking royal pain in my ass. Aw, come on. No, I, I say that lovingly, but he is. Oh, busy chat. Coltman, Dame. Hello, everybody. Hello. No, I think Nuke's a great guy. Nuke's no, I do too, but he's still a royal pain in my ass. <laughs> what did he do? <sighs> what didn't he do? He okay. had to ratio what's his name's wife, and you know, he got 11,000 followers because of it. And he fucking deals, he's the Spurg Whisperer. And all the retards I see, you know, I, I thought you were pretty bad, Jack, and, and you're you're up there, you're on the spectrum. But I'm telling you what, fucking Nuke is probably the king of Spurgs. He Just, took the title from Ryan then, I guess, because oh, I remember you saying the same thing about Ryan in his hey, tweets. You know, but see, Ryan finally saw the light. Okay. Now, ultimately, you know, if Nuke really wants to go for the title belt, he's got to take on Ryan, but I think Ryan's partially retired. Yeah. Okay. Because he locked his account, which I don't blame him. He's tired of dealing with idiots. And Nuke's over here going, more for me. <laughs> If you want to play a Twitter game, it's like I noticed that. I noticed that where I can say some deep philo philosophical points about existence no, and the utility why of it and blah blah blah. But then I make a snarky comment about some woman who is completely irrelevant to everybody, and I will never meet her, and she will never meet anybody. <clears throat> Just a snarky little comment, and boom. Or I say somebody smokes a fag like a homosexual, and there we go. It's like all of a sudden that tweet got the most traction ever. It's like, really? Really? I just say he, I only say he smokes a death stick in a certain particular manner that would indicate he has a fondness of the same sex. And that's what gets retweeted and right. and whatever. Right. That's the one? Right. You be, I have seen what makes you cheer. Your booze mean nothing. That's right. <laughs> I get it. Like I said, I say all the shit I'm saying with the most respect and, and love and admiration for Nuke, but man, you are a pain in my ass, Nuke, because I'm sitting here minding my own on Twitter, and I've, I've kind of got my timeline wrangled pretty well. Pretty well. And then, you know, Nuke enters the chat. And it's like, Jesus Christ. You know, if I didn't know you, Nuke, if I hadn't talked to you and friended you and all that shit, dude, you'd be the one getting the block. I'm just putting that out there. Where is it? Just say it. it. Where is that? Come on. Snake, are you okay? Snake? Goddamn right. Goddamn right. That will go through the ages. But since, I mean. since we're all back together again, reunited, and it feels and it's so, so good. good and it's understood. Uh huh. Uh, who's the original from? Oh, God. I knew you'd ask me that. I'd have to look it up. Coldy, 
who did reunited who did I the do, song you're I you're do. like our athem now coldy so I, i'm expecting you to produce put it out there buddy i do remember faith no more when they came back after i don't know how many years and they a started lot of years yeah and they started with reunited mike Patton, man mike mm -hmm. Patton, what a guy what a guy but since we're all uh blow up how have you been i've been good this week's been eh. You know, it's all right. Today was actually pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, the only thing that's been going on besides me going, God damn it, Nuke, every time I got log on to Twitter and here's some goddamn dumpster fire shit going on. And of course, nuclear Cadillo's at the fucking helm. It's like, besides that, all I've been doing this week, dude, my house is probably about 95% skynet now yeah, i've done some this, more. the full force that's, of this that's right the full power of this the fully armed and operational battle station yeah because dude i just got the subwoofer and the speaker i got the subwoofer yesterday and i got the speaker today and so i got the house totally like wired up for sound it's fucking Woofer. subwoofer so woofer. So woofer. Yeah, it, yet you guys have no military and you still can't bend the knee when it comes to daylight savings. So speak on, Dutchie. Let's hear it. We thank you for our health care. There you and go. Our, and our government programs and everything else. So one other thing I noticed. Where's the Bud Light? You switched to Guinness? For tonight. Oh, I do. I, I trade off between the two. Look at that. What's special about tonight? Yeah, it's just it was time for a Guinness. Guinness is that, a good beer. That will be a commercial. Yeah, <laughs> it was just time for a Guinness. I mean, trust me, the fridge is fully stocked with Bud Light, too. Right. It was just a matter of what do I want right now and what's, what's right there at the front of the fridge. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, the Guinness is here. Okay, let's have a Guinness. I mean, why not? Well, yeah. I, still, I still have my normal coffee, you know, no mm -hmm. alcohol, nothing. Uh, you know. It would be something, but yeah, the, the Twitter spurgs are at it again. What was new this week? Nuke, help me out in the chat. What was new this week? I saw some lady speaking. Crowder's about wife or Crowder. Yeah, Crowder's wife oh, using yeah. his I name for clout, I, which I loved his meme. I thought that was one of the greatest things ever. But of course, he brought the fire in the fury with that one that I'm yeah. like, when I saw it, I was like, Oh man, I was probably 10th in line to like it. And I'm like, Oh shit, here we go. I saw that. Like, I was surprised she still has his name because let's be honest here. You can change the name on Twitter. I mean, you don't right. need legal papers to change no, your username. You, can, on you can change your name. I mean, when you're verified, there's probably a couple more steps if you want to do a name change. Because mm -hmm. I got verified, for, like when when Elon first decided to say, okay, you can buy a blue check mark for eight bucks a month. I jumped on it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see, you know, what's it like being a verified user? Well, I can tell you this. Now, if you're... You know, if you're serious about monetizing and branding and all that bullshit, it's probably the way to go. Mm -hmm. okay? Because when you become verified, you can't change your name at whim. Mm -mm. You'll lose your check status. Mm. You can't. I don't even think you can change your profile picture. Okay. There's there's a few things that go into it if you get the blue check. That you don't have the the luxury, the liberty, or the ease and ability to just go, you know what? Today I'm gonna be Jack's sorry wallet. Or I'm gonna be Jack's lost Lego. Or I'm gonna be Nuke's third armpit hair. Okay, you can't just change on a whim when you're verified. Mm -hmm. All right, there's steps that go into it. And I get it. It's that's kind of the point of verification. It's the idea that you've showed Elon and friends proof that you are who you claim to be. That's the whole point. That's when you go back to the the legacy check marks. 
they were people that were big usually, but they had verified when that status was, you know, put upon them when they got crowned with the blue check that, mm -hmm. oh, Stephen King is actually fucking Stephen King. J.K. Rowling is actually J.K. Rowling. You know, all these people were legit, you know, whether they had handlers or not. Hey, that's another story. But that account actually goes back to an authentic entity. Well, it's great if you want to spend the money and you're making money and you have a, I don't know, an ambition and an, and an objective. Mm -hmm. It gives you the chance to, when you decide to tweet in reaction or in anger, it gives you a pause. Uh, do you really want to do this? And you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. You can delete it. You can edit it. You have more characters so you can write a fucking novel on Twitter, you know, which to me defeats the purpose of 280 characters, but whatever. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to do threads as much because you can write a long form blog post when you have a check mark. I've seen those. Like, it's like, I, the only thing I can think of then is like, do you really expect me to read this? Like, it, it's not a sub stack. It's not an email. It's a goddamn Twitter post. And you want I me get to it. No. do all that? It's like, no. I, I, you know, if it goes beyond the original tweet, mm -hmm. whether it's, like me, where I gave up the status because eh, I don't need to spend the money. It's it's I, not that it's not that exciting to me. I promise myself I will get a blue check mark if I hit 10k followers, because under that I'm kind of like meh. Well, yeah. and that's you know, and that's another part of it. I guess again, it's back to branding and monetizing. Okay, mm -hmm. I really don't give a fuck. So. I, I I did it for the novelty of being able to say, hey, look at me. I got a blue check mark, just like all the legacy blue check marks. And then once everyone else did the same thing and then, you know, the novelty wore off, I'm like, man, I'm paying like eight bucks a month for pretty much nothing mm -hmm. other than the, the fact that I have a blue check mark. Oh, remember the, the, the journalists back then who lost their minds? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's kind of why I did it was to piss off all those legacy check marks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's why most people did it. Hey, you know, Stephen King and JK Rowling have a blue check mark. I too have a blue check mark. I am just as good as you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have four followers. All right. Anyone can get them. I've seen I've seen dipshits, you know, accounts on on Twitter who have literally four followers and they got a blue check mark. And it's like, well, clearly they're buying theirs. I've and that's fine. That. Yeah, I've seen that like a couple of guys commenting on my shit, and I look at them, it's like uh what was it? Uh, MGTOW 62049, whatever. 42069. Sorry about that. And it's like follows eight. Four followers, blue check mark. It's like, what are you doing? What Paying eight you? bucks a month to yeah. just have a but, blue check mark. But that's the same guy, the same guys who like every now and then hit me up in the DM, like, hey Jack, we saw blah 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 and your SEO and traction. And then you look at it, the the account, it is like not even a tenth of what I have. Right. And they try to sell me a course. It's like, buddy, no. Right. It's not, it's not gonna happen, you know. Right. Right. Although I should. I could work on my SEO things, I guess, if I, eh. I, I focus more on the writing this week where it's like, you know what? I like writing. I just suck at it. But as everything, writing is a skill and writing can be learned. Correct. So, yeah. The more you write, the better you get at it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's books on it like how to write properly how to write like this uh, i mean if if you know depending on you know i'll give you a little bit of leeway because you're bilingual yes. and english is not your first language is i will never forget chesty's remark to somebody he's fucking english second language and he gets the point <laughs> thank <All right>. you <laughs> well <laughs> glad glad it. i could be a part 
the fact that there's it it probably happens maybe not every episode we do this but probably every third episode you always bring up you know what what's that thing you know because you're trying to take this idea or this concept or this jargon or whatever that you know in in your language your native tongue but you're trying to translate it over into English so that the English speaking and listening audience understands, which nine out of 10 times, I know what you're talking about. And then I'll be like, oh, you mean this? Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's it. Yes. Okay. That's how I know. And so when I've seen your writing, I'm looking at it going, yeah, your grammar's not perfect. Your punctuation's not perfect. And if you were purely an English speaking person, I would probably have to take you to task for it and be like, dude, go back to fucking school. Mm. You know, if you're going to write on my blog, learn how to fucking spell and use punctuation. Okay. But I also realize eh, English isn't your first language. So you get a pass because, hey, the concept is there. The idea is there. And other than me being a grammar Nazi and going off over minor misspellings and some mispunctuation, otherwise it's like, oh, you're, you're able to communicate your thoughts to the audience in English well enough that even I can understand it. That it's like, oh, I get what he means. I understand what he's saying, which is when you're like, what do you think? I'm like, well, other than my grammar Nazi going, oh, fuck. Beyond that, it's, no, you get it. Punctuation is another thing that should have, could have been just universal where it's like, yeah, you know what? Because the, the English use a comma when, uh, before and, and the Dutch use a comma before but. And I know that the English language doesn't use a comma when but is involved. There's a joke in there, but I just can't find it. Hmm. Mm. Something about butts. Something. Yeah. Yo, royal family, Kate. Yeah, I was worried. Like, are Kate? No. Not no. Kate from Twitter, Kate. That's who I thought he meant at first. No. And initially when he said what he said, I was thinking, okay, yeah, she definitely runs long at the mouth and she's kind of a spurg. But... She's not as bad as Dr. Queen Bees, where I had to finally just go, nope, I'm done. You poor because, bees. Oh, yeah. My girl. Bees. Yep. yep. No. Nah. Well, see, here's the thing. Kind of like I was, you know, taking Nuke here and kind of dragging him through the street a little bit. I'm going to do the same to you, too, right now. All the retards I see on my timeline, they're all your fault and Nuke's fault. They are. Queen not, not, Bees is not a retard. Bees yeah, is a perfect Bees troll. Bees is a fucking spurg. She is the perfect troll. She's a provocateur. Yes. And she, I don't like provocateurs. I get what you're saying. I just like how Bees, like, purposefully... Mm, um, here it goes. Exposes... The TRP guys with no frame and the shit there. Oh, no, I get it. All, but that's why I'm saying she's a provocateur. Okay, Allie's she's a, good at that. She's yeah. a gotcha. You know, she's a I gotcha. And yeah. yeah, that's fun for about three and a half seconds, and then after that, I'm like, you know what? I can't. I can't okay, do. you exposed him for being the frameless fuck that he is. Good for you. And I just but give her a pat on the head. On, she carries on way too much. Mm, and that's why I, I had to finally go, you know what? Making a call. Cut her loose. It's like, you know, I didn't follow her, but because of you two retards, I keep seeing her on my fucking timeline. Now my timeline's way quieter. Well, mm. by God, man, this show is getting demonetized. But luckily, we have Alex Patino for the $5. Yeah, $5 Super Chat coming right up here. <laughs> Put it in my coffee. There we go. Alex Patino for the $5. Thank you very much. Hard. Rob, I apologize for being a huge artard. No need to apologize. Artards are welcome here to a certain degree. 
I've got Alex. Oh. You're you're not even a blip on my radar on Twitter, so you have nothing to deer about. Mm-hmm. Which is good. Which yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is god damn it. I can't remember the post. It's wine more, please. And I love that post about clowns aren't funny. Like clown clowns aren't fucking funny. Which is something I see a lot of. I see a lot of clowns being taken seriously when it comes to TRP, where it's like, you don't have to like this. You don't have to agree with us. Yet there are a lot of evangelic evangelists. Evangelical. Is that the person, an evangelical? In evangelif- uh, uh, evangelist would be the person, but... Their their behavior, if you will, or their actions is evangelical. Yeah, where it's like, we need to defend TRP. No, Felicia, we have to be a fu- Veronica. I can't remember. It doesn't Veronica. matter. You don't. Yes, we have to be an asshole. Where it's like, okay, you don't agree with us. Where it's like, oh, these evil red pillars and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, we're evil. Cool. Well, that's where I just started blocking them because you two dipshits haven't figured that one out yet, which is you want that shit to go away. Hey, what did you learn from TRP? You don't pay attention to anyone you're not fucking. I was always worried you were going to say something else. What did you learn from? You yeah. block. <laughs> well, there's that too. Going, you know, Nuke brought up a comment. Where is it? There it is. Um, right above, right above Dre's shit. Okay, go above Alpha Sloth and Dre. That one. She's just another one of my reply girls. Nuke, would you fuck them or f- tell them to fuck off, please? God damn! New dating standard just dropped. <laughs> would you fuck right. them or tell would them you to fuck, fuck them or tell them to fuck, fuck off? Them. My God, sir, you've got these retarded women. Yes, they're doing pick me shit with you. And you're over here fucking dangling it out like your ball sack. And that's where I think it was either Chest or Ryan or both of them were like, good God, Nuke, would you just fuck her and get over, get it over with? Because yeah, here's where I'm at from rule zero red pill shit. Would you just fuck? fucker and get it over with my god because it gets tiresome man jesus h christ boy what the hell what does the h stand for anyway holy oh kind of obvious no it's not very worth that two bucks <laughs> Thank you, Trey, for the two bucks. Fun fact: bees are so alpha they can smell fear. So can dogs. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's Jack Napier. Is that so? The hottest man on the internet. Well, I mean, it's debatable. I mean, I never made the uh, the list by date. Psych. So my voice wasn't even on there. My voice wasn't even on there. It's like, <laughs> seriously, the best voice, sir. Sir, well, Ster- Sterling Cooper will give me a run for my money on that one. That voice, uh, is uh, okay. Whatever. Deep Australian accent. I mean, I ain't gay. Another but- nonstop tray. Keep him coming, Dre. Keep him coming. Not so great for the two bucks. Rob's blacklist is bigger than the Hillary kill list. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's part of 2024. I aspire to have more body notch counts on my blacklist than it, than Clinton's kill list. Yes. Um, if we uh, I'm going to give them a run for their money. If we weren't demonetized or nuked, we would be now. In all yeah. States. But... In 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 uh, in honor of the the topic, birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm so happy I have that. <laughs> yeah, that that's a great one. That that is evergreen right there. Mm. Oh yeah. God! If we will be remembered for something, it'll be at least the intro. <laughs>
Hey, dude, it's like I do with Red Evening, or not Red Evening, with Let Them Burn. Mm -hmm. You come for the intro, stay for the content, maybe. All right. I have I have a three minute intro. It's a great little song. It's it's fucking like the perfect intro. It's like, OK, you know, I can just put that on loop and let the guys watch that for two hours and everybody leaves strangely satisfied. I mean, there is. And I like Ryan put that well, I think you and Lennon Byrne put it well, I kind of strive for it where it's like okay we've got all these guys who've read the content who've read the material blah 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 blah. but what are you next to trp what do you like to do outside that outside that you're just a goddamn normal guy yep you ain't come, shit that's okay all right come hang out with us where it's like a normal life or at least we try to have a normal life as much as possible as much as possible when you're not a complete spurg. Like I, I see that so much. I was I was writing a bit this past week, like how to become an interesting person. Very clickbaity. And I was writing down uh or I was I was trying to figure out like where do you really start? Where do you really start? Well, you you want to get a job because you want to have an income, but hold up. You have job interviews there, blah, blah, blah. And how do you show up at a job interview? Blah, 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 blah. Well, you take care of yourself. But can you take care of yourself if you don't have an income? Well, to a certain degree. So blah, 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 blah. And then I thought about the hobbies. Like you want hobbies with plenty of social interactions. But not only that, the hobbies that will develop you as a person. So they're like physical present hobbies. We'll get to the alone hobbies later, things like that. But when you strive for hobbies and things like that, you have to be lucky you're in an environment where the people you partake in the hobby with are actually attractive. doesn't have to be always physical because it's hard when you're an attractive right. man to find other attractive people, but at least behaviorally. And the behavioral part is hard to find cappy made a whole thing about this with dungeons and dragons i've seen this like in the in like lego community pokemon community whatever nerdy community where it's like yeah there's a reason a lot of people go to those hobbies for introverted reasons if i like a better term where it's like yeah you will not find the most social of people there right well right which creates a self-fulfilling prophecy if you're a fucking retard and you can't socialize so being social is weird and awkward for you which i get it being social is not innate it's not inherited it's learned okay that that nature versus nurture shit Okay. Socialization is learned. That's part of the nurture thing. Rather, mom and dad took you to the park, you went to public school, you got into the debate club, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay. You have you everyone has their their level, their bar. This is how social I am. And what it comes down to in a lot of cases is what is your comfort zone? Now in our first world problems, most people don't want to step outside their comfort zone. So they call themselves socially awkward and they call themselves introverts and they call themselves all kinds of bullshit. They use right? it as a badge. They use it as a shield. Okay. Yeah. It is. It's a cope. Mm -hmm. The idea, mm -hmm. well, I'm introverted. Well, motherfucker, you know what? So am I. Mm-hmm. I, I fit all the descriptors, yet I have no problem going out and meeting people and talking to people and being social. That has nothing to do with introversion or extroversion. You really want to get into the, 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 the definition of introvert versus extrovert. It's when you go out and you're in public, you're in a public gathering, whether it's a large crowd of, say, several hundred or thousands. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's a smaller group of, say, 30 mm -hmm. or 10, okay? 
Are you the type of person that gets drained from that social gathering where you, you show up and you're energetic, but then two hours in, you're fucking tired. You want to go home. You want to lay down. You want to take a nap. Okay. You need quiet time. Or are you the type of person that gets energized by that crowd? Rather, again, whether it's 10 people or it's 10,000. If you're the type that I get drained, welcome to being an introvert. If you get energized where you're the last one to leave the gathering and you're high from it, you're just like, man, I am up all night now. Okay. Then you're an extrovert. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with your ability to socialize. It's kind of taking on whatever the energy, if you want to use that term, from the crowd. So when I hear all these people, oh, I'm an introvert, it's like, no, you're a social retard is mm. what you are, okay? And you're using introversion as a protection. It's a badge of honor and it's a shield mm. from the fact that you don't know how to socialize. That if I met a, most of these people that say that shit in real life, I'd be like, get the fuck away from me. It has nothing to do with introversion, extroversion. It's you don't know how to fucking communicate to another human being without sounding like an idiot. I never had trouble with socializing, in all honesty, because oh, you mentioned that like the nature and nurture. And I'm like, if I would go from my nurture, <laughs> that would have that wouldn't have ended well. But I never had trouble talking, like normal talk. I think where a lot of guys go wrong when it comes to like approaching and things like whatever is the motivation. And when you just go out to talk to people without like an agenda or whatever, everything becomes way easier. It does. Like you, you go with no agenda. And from there on out, you go like, okay, this was a fascinating conversation. Let's maybe, I would like to continue this or right. not. And of course, like the initial is like, she's hot or blah, blah, blah. And, but if you go from the perspective of, oh, I just strike up a community, uh, strike up a conversation. It's already way different. And then you kind of go from there. Oh, I was getting IOIs from this person. Well, well, you right. know, well, let's give it a shot. Well, one of the biggest indicators I've learned over the years that tells me someone's a social retard is when they say, like, I don't do or I don't like small talk. And I'm like thinking, OK, so how are you supposed to break the ice with someone that is a complete stranger, male, female, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what your fucking agenda is. How are you going to break ice with someone? Because I guarantee if you walked up to me and said, so what do you think about aliens and the new world order? Because you don't do small talk. You came up to me and said, yeah, that, that Trump, what do you think of Trump? Dude, I would tell you fuck off and get away from me. Just like any woman would too. Okay. But if you can walk up to me and be like, hey, man. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm doing all right. How are you? Oh, I'm doing okay. What about you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So, hey, what about that weather? Yeah, it's small talk and it's stupid, but that's how I know you're not a fucking retard. Well, you can actually start a conversation, right. a topic, and go from there. Sub thoughts. Right. It's not that hard, like especially the weather. Although when somebody starts talking about the weather, I always co go kind of like like inside. I go kind of like, "What do you want?" But okay, let's let's talk about the weather. Yeah, sun's finally shining. With the uh, the the dark days are finally over. All right. Got any plans for the coming summer? Blah blah blah, and then you go from there. Yeah, from there. that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to start somewhere, and if you start off with aliens, ancient empires, the thoughts of the decline of the West. And civilization is a downfall. I'm going to probably punch you because I don't know you and you're a fucking weirdo. Do you know that when you go outside, society isn't really falling down? No, it's, it's fine. Life, life goes on. All right. Life finds a way. Dude, every day I make small talk with customers because that's part of my customer service. I walk in. Hi. Hello. How are you? 
good morning or good afternoon, depending on the time of day. And they're like, oh, good morning, whatever. And if that's the end of it, then fuck it. I move on and do my job because I want to get the hell out of there. But sometimes we talk a little bit. So how you been? Oh, I've been good. How about you? Oh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. You know, and they mention whatever, you know, oh, my kids are doing this or, you know, my significant other's doing that or, you know, the work's doing this. Oh, good to know. Good to know. I hope, you know, if it's great, I hope it keeps going. And if it's not going well, I, I hope that changes. And my customers fucking love me. I'm not getting fucking complaints like some of the guys do. <laughs> That, you know, because we do. We, we had to have a talk here about a month ago. The boss had to sit us down and role play. How do you interact with your customers? Ooh. And I knew what happened. It's because someone's a social retard and they pissed off the customer. And it's not uncommon. And I'm and I and they talk about these are the guys I work with. They talk about oh the customers, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I never have any problems with my customers. I've been doing this for seven fucking years now. My customers all love me, or at worst, they're indifferent to me. Mm. Which I'm okay with that too. I'm fine with indifferent because truth is, I'm pretty much indifferent to them. It's like, oh, you know, I make small talk with them if the situation warrants it. Otherwise, I just walk in, tell them good morning, good afternoon. How you doing? Doing well. That's great to hear. Hey, can you sign here? Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And out the door I go. Because mm -hmm. okay? I'm there to work. I'm not there to be their buddy. I'm always a bit wary. I don't know if the word's wary or almost offended. I used to have a manager who just didn't do it, who just didn't do, like you came in in the morning on Monday morning or whenever it was, it's like morning, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, well, how was your weekend? Yeah, fine. Oh, cool. No, that's, that's where I'm like, oh, cool. You yeah. know? And, and I and move we, on. We, we that made the joke. You. We made the joke about him that he would have social activity in his agenda. Because he was always stuck in his office, and then he would come out, and then we would look at each other like, oh, no, it's 1030. Apparently, it's like social activity. <laughs> it's like, oh, he finally but, had time no, for but There you go. And it's like you have to put it in your fucking calendar to remind you at 1030 in the morning, go out for social activity for 30 minutes. You are a social retard. Talk to the worker bees. Like, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Like, and that, see, like I said, I always get a bit almost offended by it where it's like really <laughs> like you do not have the skills to ask me how my weekend was whatever like no. i don't need to tell you details but just a question alone would be appreciated but the thing is jack listen to yourself okay you're talking about a supervisor boss whatever who had to put it on his electronic calendar yeah go out and ask the minions how was their weekend yeah <laughs> All right, you're going, Jesus Christ, but you know what? That's probably, at least from what I've seen over the years now and what I'm still seeing, that's guys on the internet right there, writ large, okay? They can't, they don't even know how to have a conversation unless they put it on their electronic calendar to go out and be social. And so they're like, hey there, fellow young people, how you doing? Okay. And yet they're asking you, me, Nuke, Rolo, Ryan, all, Aaron, they're asking everybody, how do I get the girls? And it's Don't like, dude, them. if you have to put it on your electronic calendar to set off a reminder to go out and be social with your fellow coworkers for 30 minutes, you have no chance, none of he getting the girl. He was married and had kids. Well. Mm -hmm. So clearly he found a more retarded woman who would take him on. Okay. That, so that just proves there's somebody for everyone. Mm. Okay. That's the part I look at. I, I don't know about you. If you have like zoomers at your work. Huh? Yeah, we do. Well, there's, there's three or four of them. Like I keep hearing when I was doing the job application, I keep hearing that they have trouble with zoomers and calling with like actual client. Um, contact 
It's like, really? So that's true. Yeah. They don't want any any direct contact with right. clients. They rather right. do it via a screen and type. It's like, really? Right. But then I think to myself, how do they do it amongst each other? Same. They text and, and do screen. Hmm. Dude, the belly dancer's youngest son. He's 21 this year. The fucking dude. I mean, granted, I've I've known him now for two years. And when I first met him, he was literally that basement dwelling, lived on his computer guy 24-7. Okay. And there's a whole litany of why, why that is. And I'm not going to go into all that. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I just remember, oh, he's literally that stereotype living in mom's basement, never gets off his computer. All of his friends and interactions are all via one screen or another until he met his significant other. Hmm. That guy is now coming out of his shell. Nice. Oh. Yeah, he's getting more social. And, you know, two years ago when the belly dancer would be like, hey, you should come camping with us. And he's like, no, 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 no. You know, that's outdoors. That's there's no internet. There's no computer screens. Now he's like, so, so when are we going camping? I want to go camping. Hmm. You know, he's learned so far. I mean, he still has a ways to go. He's still behind the curve, but he's made significant strides. I can sit down with him now and have a conversation and it's not like trying to talk to the ass end of a fucking northbound donkey. Just wait till he gets dumped and introduced to the cold, hard world of women. <laughs> eh, well, you know, hey, if I'm still in the picture and if he wants to ask me, he has a wealth of knowledge that's dating his mom. You know, he knows enough about me to know enough. And he knows enough that, you know, he's not stupid. He's actually very intelligent, but he's socially awkward. He's a fucking social retard. That's something I learned a long time ago, how to be social, how I can banter with guys because I didn't have a screen attached to my fucking hands. You know, if I wanted to talk to my friends, bare minimum, I had to call them on the telephone. Otherwise, you hopped on your bike, you put on your shoes, or you hopped in your car as you got older, if you were fortunate enough to have a car, and you drove over to your friend's house. And then you sat down with them in real time, face to face, and you fucking talked to them. And you bantered, and they called you faggot and a bunch of other stuff, and you called them a bunch of fags. And hey, we're demonetizing the show for sure tonight, buddy. Well, I, I the and roll. there goes the monetization. There it is. Okay. But that's to be how honest, I said the F word first, but I said I it in the British did. slang. I know. Which is allowed. I'm, I'm saying it in the American. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said it. If we really want to nuke everything, I will drop an end bomb. Well, there's that, or, you know, we can start talking Austrian painter, only we won't call it the Austrian painter. Well, right. let, let's not. Dude. Yeah, that, but that's what I'm saying. You can oh drop my. your end bombs. I'll drop. I'll drop the Austrian painter bombs. Oh yeah. my god, that is so weird. Like when I make a tweet about something um, um, unflattering about some woman running her mouth, I get the weirdest guys. Oh yeah, liking my tweets and shit like that. It's like, um, how about no? How yeah. about no? That's the thing with audience growth. Where it's like, you will get people where you go like, no, no, let's, let's not. I don't do get a lot of that because I think I've blocked most of those guys. No, no, that's true. Because you, you say something offhand, off cuff, whatever, to see if you can get engagement. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to try to manipulate the algorithm or whatever it is you're doing over there. Like Nuke does every fucking day, every minute he's online. Okay. I see it, and, and you know, I, I see your tweet, and I know you, so I know, oh, look at Jack being cute. Okay, whatever. You know, so I'll throw a like at it or something, or I'll just keep scrolling, but then it's your reply, guys. 
that I'm like, okay. And those are the guys that are fresh meat for me that it's like, okay, start blocking some motherfuckers. Nuke's great for that, which is why I haven't unfollowed him or muted him is because it's like, well, he's great for harvesting blocks. Just see us as a public service to you, where it's like we are the raw yeah, blog list. But you know what? Yeah. Even chemotherapy can be fucking bad for your health. Because <laughs> if you're gonna say that you guys are acting as a public service, so that's like me taking chemo for fucking cancer. All right. Well, you guys in a large enough dose are fatal yourselves. Like so. I'm, I'm great, but I wouldn't go as far as I have would say i wouldn't go as far as saying i would have the ability to cure cancer no but you have the ability to destroy a whole bunch of brain cells <laughs> depends on who you're talking to i'm talking to you motherfucker <laughs> that was great Ooh. someone needs to screenshot that as you're sipping your coffee and you raise your eyebrows that's the Ooh. fucking one. hey so somebody coldy or someone you need to go back here about a minute and fucking screenshot that shit that one oh, jesus christ hey mitch good to see you make a meme out of that jack with his eyebrow raises he's doing the side glance sipping his coffee yeah we, we need to screenshot that one that was oh, good jesus christ jesus christ mm-hmm so uh, um, to, to get back before we started, there was a story. So you still have that drink? Which one? The giant big gulp. Oh, I already drank it. It's already gone? Yeah. Uh, a, I had to move on to the Guinness. Fair. Late well, you did, did, he, did he? No, they don't serve beer or alcohol at McDonald's in America. Oh, hell no. Not here they don't. Do they still do that here? Did they ever do that here? I don't I think know. They did. <laughs> hey, Alex Patino for another five bucks. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, for the five dollars demonetization tip. It is appreciated, and it will go to the Pokemon Card Fund. I I started. I have. Um, I don't even know why I did that, but I was I was out of collecting for a moment. Even though I still have like the first generation to complete, I was out of it. And for some odd reason this week, I kind of got back into it. And of course, the mail is delayed. Of course. Of, of course it is. Of course it is. They used to like drop our mail at the neighbor because for mm -hmm. some odd reason they couldn't find my house door. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I've gotten back into that. Which you know, people talk about being shadow banned on Twitter and on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real serious when you're shadow banned in real life and the fucking post office can't find your address. Hey, it saves with taxes. Oh, like, oh sorry to get the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Get the mail. But they wouldn't believe that because they will find you. And they, oh, yeah. will. they wouldn't even kill you. They will do worse to you than kill you. You wish you were dead. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> my God. I've been ghosted by the post-it. I mean, I've been, I've been ghosted by words. Been ghosted by words, in all honesty. Uh, well, I don't know, man. The post office ghosting you. You can't get shit from them. No. That, that's, I mean, you know, it's one thing that, well, I'm not getting bills and delinquency claims and junk mail, which, hey, that's a positive. But when you're trying to get fucking packages and the post office is like, oh, we don't know where you live. We can't deliver your Pokemon cards. We can't deliver your Legos. Uh, that Now it's getting real. That is something the mail <laughs> took away from us. I was talking to Watson about that. Like our toy store closed. The toy store in our, our town here after, so I'm 33, like after 35 years, it closed. It's so odd to see. Completely huh. empty. Thing has been there for 35 years. Now it's completely empty. And you look at like you look at the uh the the shopping street, and it's so weird to see where it's like the world you grew up in truly no longer exists. Yeah. It's almost I mean, it's kind of depressing, really. Yeah. It's just the price of progress, man. The, the 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 neighborhood that I grew up in, 
Yeah, the the houses, the street I used to live on. Yeah, there's not a lot that's really changed there other than, you know, a new coat of paint on a house or something. Beyond that, it's like, yeah, they all still look pretty much like they did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. All right. But the surrounding neighborhood, all the fields I used to play in and ride bikes in and play war with friends and shoot each other with pellet guns and shit. Yeah, all that <laughs> shit's gone. Okay, they're all houses or they're all businesses now. It's all concrete and pavement. The trees are gone. The, the, the ditches and shit that you used to ride through, they're gone. All that shit that I'm like, oh man, yeah, all that shit's gone. Mm. Now, just like where I live right now, where my home sits, where I am sitting right now. When I was a kid, it was a fucking field. There wasn't houses. Here was a fucking field. You know, there was some farmer growing hay or something in it. Nice. That's what used to be here. No. Now it's all gone. Same as the yeah. internet. Like this show used to be that. That author used to be that. And now it's all. Yeah, just like the internet used to be a bunch of blogs and people could have a, a civil conversation. And now what do we do? We shit in each other's mouths and then spit it back out at each other. That's all it is. It's all become adversarial. Same as like dating shows. I'm not, I'm sorry. That's not dating. That's a debate show. That is nothing. Not even a show. debate show. It's a gladiator arena. By God, man. Debates uh, actually are meant in good faith. Yeah. Where, Hey, I have a point of view. Well, I too have a point of view that probably opposes yours. Okay, well, let's get together and collaborate and talk about it. Yeah, I'll tell you my point of view. You tell me yours. We'll keep the personal attacks to none. We're going we're gonna to attack the idea. And at the end of all, maybe you came to some resolution or some kind of a conclusion. Maybe not, but either way, there's still respect to be had and people learned something. Nowadays, it's all blood sport. Like, it's all it is. Like, did you ever argue men and women with a date? Mm -hmm. Did you ever argue men and women with a date? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. huh. Sounds like fun. Believe it or not, dude, I can actually have conversations about, you know, intergender dynamics, whatever fancy buzzword you want to throw at it. I can actually have those conversations with strange women, with women I'm dating, because I'm not attacking them, and they are not attacking me. They'll have their point of view, which is very similar to what I see on the internet, just like my point of view is very similar to what I see from most guys. The difference is I'm not going to get adversarial and pissed off. If anything, I want to hear their point of view. It's like, tell me what you think. And they say it, and in my mind, I'm going, yep, sounds like pretty much every woman ever on the internet, mm -hmm. you know, which reinforces a Walt. Mm -hmm. like it depends like you, you can do it but like if they become like hostile towards men i just shut up but i but you know what dude i don't date women that get hostile to men i just don't every woman that i've ever dated actually likes men hmm. they may <laughs> not be pro patriarchy and trad con and all these other fancy buzzwords you guys love mm -hmm. but they do not hate men They do not look at men as oppressors. They don't look at men as the adversary. Okay? Kind of a prerequisite right there. Well, but again, I know how to socialize. And I select for women who are not adversarial. If they want to start talking patriarchy and oppression and all those buzzwords that certain minority groups love to throw around for reparations and other bullshit, I tune them out and move on. Mm. I don't date them. I don't go out with them. High in disagreeableness is also one of those things where you go, you can't say anything without immediately being disagreed with or questioned or whatever. Right. It's just so tiresome. And like, of right. course, you're not always right, but not everything has to turn into a debate or an argument. Hey, Marty. What's up, Marty? But again, I don't, you know, that here's vetting, you know, here's your vetting, guys. I vet for kindness. 
Mm-hmm. I don't vet for virtue or for low notch count or for traditional conservative Christian values, but I do vet for kindness. Is this someone that I can get along with? And to be honest, I'm actually real easy to get along with, especially in real life. Maybe not so much on the internet, but in real life, I am way laid back. Can he's confirm. Met, yeah, he's met me. I'm I'm chill as fuck. Okay, until I'm not. But in the morning am, at six a.m. <laughs> yeah, when you're kicking on the goddamn door like the popo. <laughs> It was you eight know. for you guys. I was up at six. Yeah, I know. You were already up having your Dunkin' Donuts. I, I just remember that incident where I came at you like a fucking bullet. And and you were all like, oh, I brought you coffee. I come in I peace. I brought you coffee. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, man, I hurt the kid. That breakfast that doesn't Dunkin change Donuts. the fact that I was trying to fucking sleep and don't be knocking on the goddamn door like a cop. <laughs> but I realized the hurt and your look in your eyes because you were so thrilled to be like, I, I brought you gifts, guys. I brought you coffee. Good morning. Oh, hey, this is what I get for gratitude. A fucking gun to the head. That's right. God that would have been something if you were packing at that moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you weren't here in Salt Lake. You might have been met with a gun because I'm, I'm packing here. I would actually see you do that when you fire a warning shot through the door. Mm -mm. I would have seen you do it. I don't do warning shots. <laughs> <laughs> shot my ear clean off. Yeah, something. You know, shot your coffee cup at least. Oh, that would have been something. Like you ruined your own coffee. I yeah. like the taste of bullets. Bullet. Oh, well, there goes bulletproof coffee. Apparently, it isn't. That would have been. There was a joke in there, but it just somewhere, somewhere, something about bulletproof coffee and not being bulletproof. God damn it! Oh, but that was <laughs> fun. I will never forget how well, how good that bed slept so where it's like oh that bed was comfortable Jesus. i won't forget that first night or the second night where it was our first real full day there in in philadelphia and you me and vince were up on the roof fucking smoking cigars and drinking and talking shit and next thing i look over you're fucking all boom funnily enough i didn't really have a jet lag no you oh. just, you're a morning person. As soon as the sun went down, you turned into a fucking tomato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and me and Vince are looking at each other going, you know, those young guys, they, they sure have the energy to start out, but they ain't got the stamina to finish while we sat there and kept drinking. <laughs> I, I, I can't hold my liquor. I will be very well, awesome. You could, that. Not only couldn't you not hold your liquor, you couldn't hold your fucking goddamn eyes open when the sun went down. Oh, that's even at work. That's a problem now. 930 at night and you're over here. 930, man. Meanwhile, I... Yeah, because it was like 930 at night. The sun yeah. had gone down and me and Vince were just warming up and you're already crashed. It's like, ah, uh, uh, you know, he, he starts, he's, he's quick off the starting gun, but he ain't got the fucking stamina for the endurance, mm. you know, while we're sitting there still drinking for like three more hours. <laughs> yeah. Sun goes down, Jack goes down. Where it's like, no, end of the day. Goodbye. Yeah. But you are the first kid on the block to be up with the birds swinging around you and deers and little bambies and shit running around. I am a goddamn Disney princess. Okay. You are. You are that morning <laughs> Disney princess. When I sing, birds will randomly attack me. <laughs> right. Jack's got Sorry. the 30. No, I've always been like this. Well, not always. When I, maybe a bit in my teenage years, I was able to stay up late. But that was mostly FOMO because like my friends wanted to go out and blah, blah, blah. But if I had it my way, I remember I had a girlfriend back then. And she wanted to go out like three days in a row. And I'm like, I look at her. I'm like, can't we just stay home and just watch a film or whatever? It's like, can't we just do that and like enjoy it? No, I have to go out and like till 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it's like for fuck, fuck all sakes. No. The I only still... way I'm doing 4 a.m. now is either with close friends like what you and I and Vince were doing. 
then okay, I'll, I'll gear up. I'll, I'll pregame for that shit. I'll go to bed early the week before so that I'm fully caught up to stay up all night. Or if I'm in my own house, you know, I, the belly dancer comes over and we have belly dancing and sex. Okay, yeah, we'll stay up till four or five in the morning occasionally. But otherwise, going out? Ah, fuck that shit, man. That's expensive and it gets old. Yeah. <laughs> That's really fun, you know, like real fun. I remember Istanbul. Istanbul was so much fucking fun. American chick, god damn it. Uh, but that that was fun where you like roam the streets of Istanbul a bit and you explore and oh, we've got this to do here and that to do there. Then I could do it. And I don't even know if I'm sober. Was I so? Yeah, I was sober. I don't know. Were you? Yeah, I was. I was. Just Coke light. Can he have another Coke? Remember Jasmine? Can yeah. he have another Coke? <laughs> <Yeah>. Coke light. <laughs> like, if you get to the point where the bartender asks if he can have another Coke, you know. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, you were chirping and chipping at that point. You were wired for sound by then. It was goddamn 10 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I know. And you were drinking Coke light like it was going out of style and you were. <laughs> it was great. That's why she had to look at me and Vince and was like, can you have another one? Yeah, are you you were sure like, can I get another one? Hey, can I get another one? <laughs> she was like, she... Can he have another one? It's like, yeah, it's his vacation. Give him another one. <laughs> I don't even remember if you guys, if I at that point had a drink or something. I think Vince bought no, you. Drink. Well, no, that particular time, dude, You, we, we all at that point, because that was in the morning. That's We went in and we, you know, we being not you, but me and Vince, we had just started. Mm -hmm. Like that was our first drink of the day. Well, not my first drink of the day, but definitely Vince's first drink of the day. But we had just started. Me and Vince, we were pre-gaming at that point. And you were already... <laughs> and all you were doing is drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> like I said, motherfucking Disney princess. God yeah. Damn it. Yeah, because you are, you're that morning guy. And even Jasmine was like, can he have another Coke? It's like, yeah, he's on vacation. Give him another Coke. <laughs> yeah. You want to wrap this one up? Sure. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Dre, for the super chats. Really appreciate them. Everything Rob, Rob says.net, everything me. All the links are in the chats, the audiobooks, whatever. If you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get my version of the book of book audiobook for free. Other than that, Hit the like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below your thoughts of this show. Take us out. Boom. Talk scenes.